Okay, we're going to try this again, uh, this time with the other piece of glass. <clears throat> and uh, we'll see if we can get a front view uh, better than the last time. <clears throat> okay. Uh, as I was viewing the other video, the first one, I noticed that there was a few things that uh, I should uh, go over uh, about glass. And um, first of all, it is uh, it is essential that you wear uh, gloves or something. But um, the dust from the glass is also harmful. So right now it's kind of windy, so I don't have to worry too much about that. But uh, you shouldn't be breathing the uh, the dust from the glass. Uh, also. <clears throat> Uh, when you're starting napping glass, a lot of times when you're hitting on the ends, you'll snap it in the middle. Um, you have to be very delicate, very careful about hitting on the ends. Uh, and what I, what I like to do is make sure I have plenty of material in the middle while I'm napping. And I'll take that off last. I had a question on the uh, first video about why do I nap? Or why do I send flakes across the convex side before I do the concave side? Um, I've always had better results flattening out this side first, making the point narrow, and then flaking on this side. Because I can send short flakes across a concave side. Um, it, the more narrow it is, the more successful I am at sending a flake across. If I start wide, it's going to probably terminate somewhere in the middle. And I'll have to come from the other side to meet up with that. And it'll leave a, a strange depression in the very middle. Uh, it'll, the, the cross section will be almost uh, V shaped. <clears throat> so, uh, this is a large piece of glass. I'm going to try to make an Ishi type point out of this one. And uh, it'll be a concave base side notch. I'll try my best on doing the, the notches. Uh, I probably won't be able to make a point as nice as Ishii's, but that's my goal for this one. I'm going to take my time on this one. Uh, I noticed that I was very, very shaky and very much in a hurry in the first one. So I'm going to take my time a little bit more on this one. And what I'm doing now is just shaping this piece into more or less a triangular shape. I'm not worried about creating steps and hinges and all that right now. Not too much anyway. Now in the other video, when I recorded the uh, footage from the other camera the gloves were in the way quite a bit uh, in the other view so I'm going to try to make a conscious effort in uh, trying to keep the gloves out of the view or try not to block the, the view of the arrowhead okay I almost took too much off the tip there. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, zigzag the edges to get rid of the flat spots. With, uh, with glass, it's wise to leave it thick in the middle. I think that Ishii's points averaged about a quarter inch or slightly less of, than a quarter inch in the thickest parts of his points. So 
I'd recommend leaving as much as you can. Not making it too thin in the middle. Because uh, glass is very fragile. Even though it is consistent, and the material is consistent all the way through, it, it can be unpredictable. Especially if you uh, take it for granted that it's so easy and, and forget to hit below center line and not to put so much pressure on because it's very easy to send plates across on glass. You don't need to exert a lot of force. And indirect percussion, uh, by definition, will give you a lot of force in a small area, so you have to be extra careful. I won't explain too much more. I'm going to be concentrating mainly on getting this point to the right proportions and then try to imitate one of Ishii's points. And I'll try to keep the work in the view of both cameras. Okay. shaping right now. There's a there's a lump there. I should probably take that out now. got a curve in it which means I need to the easiest way to get rid of that I think is to take more mass off the base it's uh it's, it'll be beneficial if I have a very thin base one once I get to notching so I think I'm going to concentrate on removing this curve by mainly working on this end to to get rid of that curve and leaving the tip a little thick for now. And the reason for that is the tip can easily snap off while I'm working on the base if it's thin. But if I leave it thick, it should have a good chance for survival. But I, I am going to take my time on this one. See, I tried to shoot a flake all the way across without overshooting. It worked pretty good. If I can do that on the other side, that'd be excellent. And uh, you don't want to grind too much on the edges because then it would require a lot of force to break that flake off or to break the surface tension to remove the flake. So you do want to leave a little bit of a sharpness to it. If you overgrind, you'll have to, like I said, 
put a lot of force into removing that flake. And that's exactly what you don't want with glass. You have to be very delicate with glass. Doesn't take much at all to break that tensile strength. Okay, that looks pretty flat. Maybe a little bit more. Now I'm not exactly sure on the proportions of the Ishii point, but I'm going to leave it kind of wide so I can show you the uh, how the flakes look when you try to take off long flakes. Hopefully they won't look too bad. <laughs> and uh, this may be a good size for hunting. It looks about an inch wide. So we'll leave it like this. Try not to lose too much width on it. There's not much of the original surface on this side, so I'm not even going to worry about it. And there's only a little bit in the middle here, so... What I'm going to do now is just shape up this edge, eliminate the waviness. And then I will make the base a little more concave and then I'll notch it. Risky that platform was not below center line. Now, I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's very risky and it's, I consider it an uh, advanced technique to be able to hit above center line and remove a flake on glass or something fragile like obsidian. I try to avoid that whenever possible. I always try to get below center line. better. Now if you have trouble judging where the center line is, the, uh, the glass will tell you because it'll break. <laughs> All I can say is from experience, uh, experience actually is your best teacher as far as knowing where center line is and what you can get away with. Again, I'm very careful. I'm, a, I'm especially careful when I thin from the base because the tip can snap off with glass. It's very brittle, so this will not flex. It will not bend very much, even though this is bottle glass and it is slightly flexible. Thinning from the base, you've got to be very, very careful. was a pretty bad crushing area and a step. Let me try to remove it from the side here. Lower that edge. Send a flake across. That 
wasn't too bad. I used to nap a lot of glass, but uh, with the kids around, I try not to try not to nap glass because it will get into their feet. They like to go barefoot. So as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to clean up all this glass that's down here. I'm not going to leave it like I do with the rock chips. Okay, I'm going to pay more attention now. I'm getting a lot of steps, so... I'm not going to narrate too much after this. Okay, that last one pretty much took off the original surface, so now I'm just going to uh, dress it up, get rid of the lumpy spots, like there's a big lumpy spot on the tip that I left earlier, and then I'll make the base more concave and then notch it.
And the last step will be just finishing the tip. And maybe sending in some more thinning flakes. We'll see. Hopefully you can see what I did there. I just went down the edge and very delicately removed those flakes to thin out the base. spot there but I'm going to try to send the flake off of this platform across there to get rid of that I got most of it but I need to send another flake across Okay, now I'll use pressure to, uh, to notch it, to dress it up a little bit. It's pretty jagged right now, so... blow off these barbs so you got to be very careful once you get to the end there Normally I'd be using my buffalo horn pad in a piece of black leather, but I can't see this blue glass on that surface on a black pad.
know some of you uh, know that copper is a little bit better than steel for this type of work but uh, I've gotten so used to using steel that I just use it for everything it's a very low maintenance I don't have to keep sharpening it as often but uh, copper does work very well for this antler not so much unless it's very sharp and uh, very dry Copper will actually grab the uh, glass a little bit better. Steel uh, it feels like the glass is extremely slick when you're using steel. It doesn't really grab onto the glass like copper. Now, this is a brand new ice pick. I probably should have prepared this better beforehand. The, uh, the notches won't be able to have a narrow entry. And I'm not going to make them very deep. Same procedure as with stone, try to square off the bottom of that notch. Push in the middle. sun is coming in so I hope you can still see that the glare from the sun is getting pretty pretty intense Yeah, it kind of blew off, blew up that corner off right there on that notch, so I'll make it a little wider. 
But I encountered a thick split anyway, so it looks like I'd have to make it wider anyway. You can see how the steel's kind of slipping in there. But it still works okay. I just have to be very careful with the amount of pressure I apply. Just a little too much and I can snap that that ear right off. So I started to stall pretty bad, but I think I got it restarted. Score off the bottom. Push in the middle. Now ideally you don't want to see a lot of crushing at the bottom of that notch, so I'm going to stop here while I'm ahead on that side. Maybe expand the notch a little bit on this side. Okay, that's good enough for the notches. Sunlight is sunlight's pretty bright, but I think we can still see it. And I'll just finish up with pressure on the edges near the tip. It's already thirty four and a half minutes. I've got plenty of blue glass left, so I think maybe I'll make a copper pressure flaker and make another video using a copper pressure flaker. There are all kinds of different notching tools that I haven't even explored or shown in videos yet. I think I might do that, just make some notching tools out of copper. for the next series of videos.
this I didn't want it to happen. Let's see. I managed to get most of those steps off. A little bit more trimming and then we'll be done. Just getting rid of the dull spots and uh, straightening out that edge. The grinding produces a lot of uh, dull areas. But you really can't avoid the grinding with the glass, even at the very final stages. Or abrading, I should say. Now, Ishii didn't abrade very much. And it's all a matter of experience. Once you get the hang of it, you can use the, uh, the bulb from the last flake as your platform. Or find flat spots that are that you can push on without abrading. But that comes from experience. Okay, I'll stop messing with it. That's it. I don't think I don't have a tape measure, but uh, that's about an inch wide. So it'd be okay for hunting as long as your local laws allow barbs. But uh, I believe Ishii did produce points of this shape. With a needle tip, concave base, and side notches. Although I think his were expanding notches. And not so crude like mine. There you go.